What's up guys? I'm Amanda, Lieutenant Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So hi, it's been two weeks since I've done my Aeroid Market unboxing. So I wanted to jump on here today and do a video for you guys and basically tell you what I've been doing with these plants and basically how they've been doing, if they're developing any new roots or new leaves or anything like that. I'll give you guys a little bit of a root update so you guys can see how they're rooting, if they're rooting at all. Last week I was, I had, I caught like a little bit of a nasty cold. So I was totally meeting to do a one week update, but this is going to be an even bigger update because it's been two weeks. Let's get into it. Let's talk about these imports. You guys can probably see some of the imports kind of peeping through and see that they're still green and they're still doing good. I have been pleasantly surprised on how well these plants have acclimated, but I have gone through a few hiccups along the way. So let's start with the first week. So the first week after I did my unboxing video, I unwrapped all of the roots from the Kind of tissue paper stuff that they wrapped the plants in and i did notice that most of the roots were either a little bit dry or just like not super healthy but not not healthy either if that makes sense they just didn't look right to me i actually couldn't pinpoint what it was i think some of them wound up getting a little too dry some of the roots were just kind of thin and shrivelly. I removed any of the dead or dying leaves. Um, you can probably see with this one, so this uh, Philodendron Beauty, this leaf is probably ready to go um, just because it's just kind of like, it's starting to yellow. You can kind of see starting to get that like yellowy. I don't know why my camera's not focusing, but yeah, it's starting to get kind of yellowy and whatever. So I'm going to eventually kind of cut that off, but that's the, the furthest like bottom leaf. So that's to be expected. Some of the leaves were um, kind of had that transport damage. Um, I'll kind of show you what I mean with that, but it's just kind of like, you know, this kind of the foliage kind of gets weird. This has like silvery spots on it and it has a little bit of like import damage, which you could cut that off. But because there's only a few leaves on there, I don't want to remove too much. I still want to be able to have that plant photosynthesize well enough to be able to grow new roots. So I don't want to remove too many of the leaves, but if they're really dying off, like if they're starting to really yellow, then I'll probably remove them. Or if they're like severely damaged, I would remove them. Two leaves I did lose from this plant because it did start to yellow off and die off, which is too expected. It was also the bottom two leaves anyway, so it's not super worrisome with that. But other than that, I haven't really lost any other leaves from these imports. So if you saw my import video, you know that when I got this Monstera, it was pretty kind of rough looking. Uh, the other two or three, I can't remember how many, but the other leaves that were attached to this were like already kind of darkened, dying, kind of just done. So I removed those leaves and kept the most green leaf. And you can see it is it is yellowing, it is hurting a bit, but it's still, it's still retaining moisture. It's still doing pretty well. After I unpackaged them, I actually sprayed them all down with very diluted hydrogen peroxide. I wanted to make sure that if there was any kind of really just kind of i mean i'm sure these plants have gotten handled a lot with the inspections and packaging and me and you know this or that i just wanted to make sure that they were kind of disinfected in a sense if i could throw out a guess i think i did like a tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide per cup of water so it wasn't super like concentrated it was very diluted i wound up spraying that down and some of them did start to kind of do that like rice crispy sound the little sizzle so you know that there was probably some root rot that i was trying to fight after about five minutes i rinsed all the roots off and i wound up putting them all into their own sanitized jars what i did for the jars just really quick is i um filled all the jars with hot soapy water 
And I also put about a teaspoon of bleach into all of the jars before I planted them. Really gave it a good wash and rinsed it out. I wanted to make sure that I'm starting out with a completely clean and sanitized area for them. That way they don't get any, really any like bacteria or anything transferring to them because they've already been through a lot. You don't wanna add any more stress or anything to them. So I wanted to make sure that they're starting out clean and fresh. For the water that I put them in, I pre-mixed fish it and Super Thrive together in a gallon container. And you just basically follow the instructions on the back. And I basically made a gallon just so I could replace the water every day, every other day. That's basically what I did for an entire week. So every day, every other day, sometimes I'd skip a day. I wanted to make sure that the water was getting changed, but I also don't want them to go into shock. I don't want them to get messed up, messed around too much. So I did that solution of Super Thrive and Fish It fill them all up and put them out in my garage. Luckily we have been getting good weather in Orlando, but my garage typically is anywhere from 70 to 85 degrees. And I wound up taking my hygrometer and putting it out there just so I can monitor the temperature and humidity. From the numerous articles and YouTube videos that I looked up, they suggest to keep it in the most humid, humid area as possible. So, I thought my garage would be a good fit. It's also in a northeast window, so it does get a good amount of bright morning light and then like low to medium light during the afternoon and evening. I did try to keep it as close to the window as possible so we could get as much light as they can, but also no direct sun. And I, like I said, I switched out the water every other day every day it was actually funny because in my garage it's nice and warm in there but also when i run my dryer the humidity in there my hygrometer must not get above a hundred percent humidity because i would go out there while it was running and it would say 99 percent humidity and i'm like okay these plants are getting a good amount of humidity like they'll be fine the only plant that i had an issue with in the garage is the Lapacia, the fishbone. That plant is actually going to be living in a terrarium. I am going to make sure that that plant kind of stays in an area. So I actually wound up, I actually wound up going to Michael's and I bought a little jar for that plant to live in. And ever since I've done that, it's perked right back up. But while it was in the garage, it was in a plastic bag. I didn't feel like that was necessary for the rest of the plants. I know that that is a, another way that people can acclimate if you don't have enough humidity in your, in your room to take plastic bags and kind of put them over the plant, especially with the water evaporating, it will cause a humidity area like a little humidity dome for them but i didn't want to do too much um with that i also don't want them to get super used to like high 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 humidity so i just kind of wanted to just play around with that but i knew that the lapacia definitely needed to be in a more humid environment i guess 100 percent humidity plus wasn't enough for it but that's whatever. When it wasn't actually 100% humidity in my garage, it would get down to like 70, like 60, 70. So I thought that was still fine. I mean, that's still pretty humid and it's a little bit more humid than my like house humidity gets. My house usually generally is around 50 to 60%. I figured that was just a little bit of step above than, you know, kind of getting them used to my areas, kind of what I was thinking. So after a week, of changing the water out and having them in the garage, I wound up moving them into my plant room. Ever since I moved them into my plant room, they exploded with like new growth. I think it's because of the amount of light in my plant room and the, I mean, it was in kind of a lower light. So also when I, they were in my garage, I was battling constantly with root rot. So I think the, combination of them being in a lower light area and them being straight from like whatever medium they were growing in to water and if the roots were kind of drier they wind up 
rotting instead of absorbing that moisture. But none of the leaves felt droopy. None of them started to get any signs of like they're not getting enough water. So I'm assuming they were fine. And I'll go in each of my plants that I have and I'll kind of let you know how they've been doing individually. This is just kind of a generalized grouping of everybody. But I was constantly battling root rot actually in between like the water changes, I would do another hydrogen peroxide treatment and pulling off, I would just constantly keep pulling off the little roots that would grow off of the aerial roots constantly. So I did lose probably a good 75 to 90% of the roots, but I'm trying to look at the bright side and I'm like, okay, well that gives me an excuse to kind of start over with the plant. Once I put any of these plants in the plant room, they immediately started thriving. So let me go in little by little and kind of show you all of the plants and kind of give you an idea of like the roots and everything like that so you guys can see how they're doing. So the first plant I'll show you is my monster elbow. She's still doing amazing. No new leaves yet, but she started to get a little bit of a fat back. So I'm really excited about that. But like, she's still doing really well. Like, oh, just so beautiful. I can't get over this plant, like honestly. It's just so pretty, um, like, oh, so in love. All right, you guys ready to see these roots? I am like, so excited. Because they're in glass jars, I get to monitor them, so we already know, like, but look at this. So you guys can probably tell if you've seen that video that I had to chop off most of the roots. So for this plant, I actually took off every root except for the aerial roots because the, the little tiny roots that grew off of it were just rotting. They were just not doing well. So we have some new roots right here. Some little baby roots. We have a root right here that's growing in. We have a root right here that's growing in. Like it's doing so well, so well. And the leaves, like I haven't lost any leaves. They're still doing good. I don't see another growth point yet, but maybe within time I might get another growth point. The stems are still super firm. It's still doing really well. It's, it's just doing so good. Like this plant is probably doing the best. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's doing better than I thought it would. Honestly, I kind of was nervous. I'm like, watch this plant be the plant that does the worst because it's the one that I want the most. <laughs> it's gonna give me a, a hard time. That monster elbow, she's doing great. She's doing a good job. I mean, most of these plants I'm probably going to keep in water for <sighs> usually like one to two months. Um, I itching to repot them but I, I really want to make sure that they're established but I also like to do a transition where I put them in moss so I might transition some of them into moss once it really starts to root out. This I'm going to probably wait until the smaller roots get to about two inches and then maybe think about transferring into moss if you have rooted a monster elbow let me know how it went, um, or you think I should just keep it in water. The next plant, the Florida Beauty. So this beautiful plant, we, we're gonna lose this leaf, but, and we have a new leaf getting ready to come out. I'm so excited to see how pretty that is. Now for the roots, I should have grabbed like a towel. I didn't, so I'm getting water all over my house. So this was one of the plants that I was actually able to keep most of the roots. So I probably lost maybe, I would say maybe like 25% of the roots um, on this plant, but most of them are doing well. I mean, I have a lot that are growing in. Really any of the little white roots that you see are like new roots that are coming in. So like, it's just so, good to see that. I'm just so thankful that like these plants are like rooting so well. Again, I haven't had any on any of these plants, kind of a spoiler alert. I haven't had any new leaves, but I've had some kind of starting to 
sprout a little bit. I mean, I have that little guy that's probably gonna unfurl within the next couple of weeks. And then my monster auto is starting to get a little bit of something. So this plant was probably doing the worst when I did my unboxing. It was, <laughs> it wasn't really happy. I mean, this plant actually wound up losing the most root. So I did only keep two of the aerial roots and you can see, and tap the water off. We have two little baby roots kind of coming in. And I just noticed those today when I went to do this, this update video. Um, so it did have another chunk on there that was growing a growth point and I had to cut it off because it started to get, it was the most disgusting thing I've ever witnessed in a like plant. It was firm, it felt firm until I gave it a little bit more give and it was like hollow inside, but like white goo. It was so disgusting. I cut it, it I cut it off immediately and I cut it to where it was healthy because I'm like, I, I can't. So I was only really able to salvage these two aerial roots, but luckily enough, I have that. And we have a growth point coming in. You guys can see that. Now in my unboxing, you probably noticed that it was starting to unfurl a leaf. Unfortunately, it did wind up rotting off. You can see it kind of still a little bit in the sheath. Um, it did rot off to be expected. I was excited that it was unfurling, but it's okay, it happens. That one's probably doing not the best, but not the worst either. The next one is my Florida Ghost. Still a beauty. And still has I most of the leaves, honestly. Like, I think I've maybe, I think I maybe lost one or two smaller leaves but I really haven't lost that many. Now for this one, you can kind of see where the rot was starting to form and I may need to go back in and remove some of these roots so you can see any of these like ambery color roots, I'm gonna just kind of cut off. I actually need to redo all of these, the water in these. Actually really quick, ever since I've moved them into my plant room, I've only changed the water out probably every two to three days and I'm only using tap water. I just wanted to kind of try that out and see how that was. I don't know if the fish it and super thrive were actually rotting it or if it was just a combination of the lower light with the fish shit, but it may have been too much. But ever since I've done that, it's been fine. You can see like there is some pieces that probably need to be cut off, but I do have a lot of new white growth on this plant. So actually now examining it, I'm probably going to remove those roots and I might do another hydrogen peroxide treatment on this guy just to make sure that it stays rooted really well and those other new roots don't get any issues or any root rot. We don't want that. The next plant is my Apicea. So this beauty is in her terranium and I love, love this terranium. I got it at Michael's, it was like $12. It kind of looks like a cookie jar, which I think is really adorable and Look at this. She perked right up. I did lose, I think, two leaves on this plant, like the two smaller leaves. I did kind of put it further down into the water to see if I can get those couple of nodes to root, just so I don't have such a long, like, lanky plant, and it kind of is more of like a bushy plant, um, but I don't know much about these plants at all. So I'm just kind of going with it, just trying. I think one of you guys mentioned that they do like a lot of humidity and that's when I got the terrarium for it. So thank you for who said that because that really did change up the game for this plant, but it's so pretty. Like the color on that, like the pinky color, it's so pretty and maybe it will grow new leaves eventually. And for the roots, I can't tell. I really can't. Like, it, the roots look good, but like, I can't tell if there's new ones just cause it's such a 
thin rooted plant. Like the roots are so thin. This cute terbranium, I just love it. It's just so pretty. And it sits on my plant shelf. This is probably the only plant that sits on my plant shelf of my grow lights. The other plants are like right in front of my southeast facing window. Last but not least is this Milano Chrysum. So this was the plant that I did a split decision on. I'm actually going to move this over so I can show you guys better. So this was a plant that I... If I have one regret with this plant, um, it would be that I probably shouldn't have cut all of the roots off. This plant was probably the most root rotted other than the Monstera. So I cut off all of the roots um, because it was do not doing well. So, but we have all of those aerial roots like great like aerial roots like crazy so i was like you know what because that's going on and it's just not doing great i'm gonna try to reroot it well from what i've learned is this this plant is actually not easy to root <laughs> so i probably should have left some of the roots this was actually the first plant that i kind of rehabbed kind of like examined and tried to do something with so when I started to notice like the plants were starting to get root rot this is the first plant that got the hack and then after I did it I was like I probably shouldn't do that to the rest of them but I mean it gives me a chance to kind of start over and do something new but ever since I've done that I have one two and I think three growth points on this guy so i'm probably going to get a, another offshoot at some point with this plant but i'm just kind of bummed that i did that um seeing how well all of these plants rooted from the aerial roots and from the other kind of what i thought were dying roots but i was like oh it's a philodendron it's gonna be easy to root like it'll be fine so <laughs> we'll see with this guy how well it roots if it doesn't do anything in water, I'm going to probably try to switch it to moss and maybe see if I can switch to like a moss perlite mix and see if I can root it in moss or perlite. If you also have any suggestions on how to root this, I'm really happy too because this leaf is starting to harden off. It's just looking so good and we have a new leaf on the back kind of coming in, although it may not come in as nice as this one just because, well, it's not getting the nutrients it needs. But it's still, I mean, the leaves are still thick. They're still firm. So it is getting nutrients. It is getting water from somewhere. So hopefully soon it will start to root. I think with my next update, I'll probably do, well, like after a full month. So in another two weeks, I'll do an update and we'll see if we get any roots by then. Um, I feel like my plants have kind of randomly just started taking off in the plant room. So I'm going to see, I might even decide to move this into my room in here, kind of behind me where you see all that bright, bright light that's behind me. That's also a southeast window. So that might be good. The only problem is it doesn't get super humid in here and I don't want that to kind of throw a fit because of humidity. I don't know. I probably keep it in my plant room for now and see if it, what it does. And if it doesn't do anything, then I'll kind of go from there. But yeah, I mean, I think that so far, these have done really well. Except for the this one, this guy over here, they're rooting really well. Everybody's rooting good. Root rot is almost gone, other than that Florida ghost. I'm gonna have to take care of that after the video. <laughs> but I feel like this whole process has made me a little bit more confident in doing like imports and doing more like importing and stuff like that. It's actually funny because I got all of these plants, like I literally like all of these are like ultimate wishlist plants, like all of them are. And because of that, I went to a plant sale and I was like, I don't want or need anything because I have all the plants that I want. Like how, how do you have a monster elbow? Like other than a tie constellation, like what else do you want? You know, like, so. <laughs> It's, it's going to be tough for me to find like other plants this year that I'm going to really want. But so far, I mean, I, I'm really, I'm really happy on how well they're doing. 
Again, I can't really tell with the Lapisia if it's doing well or not, but at least it's perked up. So I think it will probably start to grow roots a little bit. But other than that, I mean, it's doing really well. It's doing really good. So that's it for today. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I will try to answer them as best as possible. Again, this is my first time I've ever imported anything or ever acclimated anything like to this extent. So I am not at all in any expert. I'm just kind of going off of what other people have done and basically my own plant knowledge and like what I've done in the past with my plants. So again, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as best as possible, but that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.